Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I've noticed over the last, I don't know how long, I continuously get a lot of comments on my YouTube channel about my choice of instruments for measuring with, particularly when I go and get out my good old trusted dial calipers to make a measurement with. So today what I thought we'd do is just a real quick machine shop basics class on measuring devices, particularly when to use calipers and when do you need to get out the micrometer. Spoiler alert, the answer to the question is, it all depends. Depends on what you're measuring, depends on the tolerances that you're measuring, and it depends on how comfortable you are with your individual tools. Let's get in here and talk about these two different instruments for measurement, when to use them and when to not. So what we're going to be talking about today is really more geared toward when you're measuring something round, something uh, like this gauge pin that I have here. This is a 600 thousandths gauge pin. Should measure pretty much right on the money at 0 .600. This is a plus model, so it's actually going to be just a teeny tiny amount over that size by a 10 thousandth or two, but still, this will give us a good um, item to measure. The gold standard when making any kind of measurements on, particularly on round stock, is the micrometer. The micrometer is by far going to be the most accurate way to measure whatever you're measuring over here. But while the micrometer has the positive of being the most accurate way to measure something, it also has a negative. And the negative is, is that it's not the easiest to read, particularly if you have the, the old traditional style like this, where you have to read the vernier scale on there. It's not that difficult, and I'm not going to go into that. I've actually got a video that I did in the past on how to read a micrometer, uh, and it requires a little bit of math. It's really not that difficult. Once you use it for a while, you'll get used to doing it, and you can make measurements very easily. But it's still, it requires doing some math. It requires doing some uh, calculations to be able to come up with that very accurate number. The alternative is you can use a set of dial calipers such as these. And I prefer the dial calipers over the digital ones. Just, I'm old school. I like that spatial relationship that you have on that dial so that you can kind of see how far you are off with that from a number with that dial. It just kind of gives me a visual in my mind as to how close I am. It also allows me to see if I'm above or below a number without really having to think about the numbers. And honestly, guys, again, I'm just old school. This is what I've used my entire life. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using digital uh, calipers. In fact, they have advantages, uh, particularly if you want to switch between uh, inches in metric numbers. It's just a push of a button while these will pretty much only read in inches. But I digress a little bit. The beauty to these is that you can very easily, very quickly get a measurement. So the dial on this goes 100 thousandths per revolution. You come in here, you put it on the part, you read it, six, you're on zero, that's 600 thousandths of an inch. It's that quick to get a measurement. And quite honestly, that's one of the big reasons why I use dial calipers so much because they are quick and easy and I can see very easily where I'm at. Now, I say that the micrometer is more accurate than, than the dial calipers. The question is, is how much more accurate? Well, that's a question that you need to ask yourself and maybe go out in the shop and do some practicing with some measurements. Get yourself something that you know, such as a, a gauge rod like this, a piece of a gauge pin, that you know exactly what it is and start measuring with the two and start getting comfortable with it. Honestly, uh, with a dial caliper, you know, you can, you can come in here and you can put it on there. It's reading right on the money. You go cranking on this thing, I can squeeze it down 5,000. Well, you know, I can do the same thing with the, with the micrometer. If you're not using one that has a ratchet on here, you know, I can come in here. I can get down here on the thimble. I can crank down on that. I can change that measurement. It's all about getting a feel for it. And there's only one way to get a feel for how to measure with these tools, and that is to get in here and measure something that you know. So with the, the micrometer, since I got it up here, this thing here is going to get you down, and this one here is one that reads to a ten thousandth of an inch. I'm not going to go through there, but it's got a scale over a secondary scale over here that you can go in and, and read to a ten thousand. So this thing is very, very accurate. And if you look, it's reading right on that six hundred thousandths mark, about a ten thousandth over it. Again, it's a plus. It's a plus, so that makes sense for it to be just a little bit over. But guys, I can come in here with my calipers and I can measure that very quickly, just the same. 
Now I will say that with the dial calipers, you do have a little bit more margin for error. So know what you're working on, okay? Am I working on a part that has tolerances of plus or minus 10 thousandths or even plus or minus 5 thousandths? You know what? The dial calipers are good enough in that situation. If you're machining a part that needs to be down to maybe a thousandth of an inch or even sub thousandths of an inch, go get your micrometer. Most of the work that I do in my shop, quite honestly, I may try to hit a number right on, but unless I'm doing a press fit or an interference fit or something like that, uh, the calipers are good enough most of the time, which is why you see me using them so much. And guys, I can tell you that from years of practice and experience and actually checking myself, usually whenever I get the micrometer out, I'm gonna measure it with both. I'm gonna measure it with both just because I can quickly see what the number is here and it, I have to do a little bit of math here. It kind of gives me that check in my mind to make sure I'm doing the math right, even though I know how to do the math, but still, I check them with both. And what I have found over 25 years of working around this equipment is, is that every day, day in and day out, I can measure something to within a thousandth of an inch of my calipers and I'm gonna be all right. So again, I can measure something to a thousandth of an inch for these calipers and I'm gonna be just fine. If I need more accuracy, if it's a more critical measurement, we go to the micrometer. It's that simple. So there you go, guys, my thoughts. And again, these are my thoughts between a dial caliper and a micrometer. I'm probably never going to get the naysayers who every time I go reach for my dial calipers to stop saying, hey, you need to use a micrometer instead because it's more accurate. Technically, yes, you're right. And absolutely, in many cases, the micrometer is the right tool for the job. But again, know your work, know what your tolerances are, know what you're dealing with. If you're like me, most of the time, the dial caliper is more than good enough. I hear people calling them guessometers because they say they're so inaccurate. They're a precision tool. This is just more of a precision tool. How much precision do you need? I think sometimes as machinists, uh, we tend to go after this super tight tolerance, this super high precision because we can, because we have the tools and the equipment to do it. And because, you know, and hey, when I'm turning something on the lathe, I wanna hit my number right on. It's good practice to do that. But again, know your tolerances, know what you can get away with. And sometimes it's a matter of time. Time is money, and when you're in the shop, if it takes you 30 seconds to read something with a micrometer, and it takes you five seconds to read something with a dial caliper, over the course of a day, making that part in time and time and time and time again, the tolerances will allow it, you're gonna save time and you're gonna save money by using your dial calipers. Well guys, there you go, those are my thoughts. They're my thoughts. Again, I know what my capabilities are. I know what I'm comfortable with. I know what tool I need to go grab whenever I'm doing a job to get the level of accuracy that I need. Um, figure it out for yourself. Again, get them both, use them both, become comfortable with using both of them so that when you know what your limitations are, you know how accurately you can measure with one versus the other. And again, you can make that decision in your shop for your projects, for the tolerances that you're working with as to which one is the right tool for the right job. That's gonna be it, guys. Uh, those again are my thoughts. Your thoughts may differ. If they do, that's fine. We can all get along in this great big world. That's gonna be a wrap. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are appreciated, and I'm sure there will be plenty. Uh, and we'll catch you on the next video.